Hey guys, welcome to the video. My name is Oliver King and this video is just going to be a discussion about Pod5 and some useful tactics that I've learned that you might be able to make use of. Since Shutterstock readjusted its earnings um, setup last year, I've been kind of looking for alternatives outside of it or besides it. So Pod5 is one of the ones that I focused on a lot more, just uploading more videos to and trying to get my first sale. And in the last few months I've made five sales, so um, I've just started kind of learning about it and figuring out what works. So hopefully what I can do is pass some of that knowledge on to you so that you can make either your first sale or just make more sales on Pond5. The first thing that I just want to point out to people on the Pond5 website is that it has a lot of good data that you can use. And you can actually use this data for sites like Adobe Stock and Shutterstock as well. It's basically just uh, feedback based on how many views your videos are getting and kind of like how much uh, traffic people are going to be putting on to your page. And this is a really good indicator to see if what you are pursuing and what you're making with stock is going to be popular or not. So I use this a lot to kind of determine where to focus my efforts. For instance, I've noticed that there's a lot of traffic that goes towards Adobe After Effects uh, digital renders. I'm not particularly good at that, but I did sell a couple of them on Adobe Stock and my first one on Pond5 not too long ago. So if you're good at digital renders, they got a lot of traffic. They're not actually that hard to make. It seems intimidating at first, but you can actually learn After Effects relatively quickly and create some cool little videos if you're already paying for that service. So it is a good option. I think the problem with a lot of the other sites like Shutterstock and Adobe Stock is that they don't really give you a lot of feedback on what people are looking at with your portfolio. So I really like that for Pond5. So that would be the first thing I'd say. Just look at that, see, where your traffic is going and then maybe shoot according to that or focus on those areas if you're concerned with making a little bit more money. The second thing that I've really liked about it is that you can get your stuff accepted a lot more easily than you could with Shutterstock or Adobe Stock. Uh, Pod5 isn't really that picky honestly about um, what you put on it. So even if it's somewhat a little bit grainier or if it's uh, footage that's not perfect or it's gotten rejected for whatever reason from Shutterstock, if you think it has value, you might be correct. So for instance, I had a video of my wife giving my dog a bath and I thought it was a really good thing. So I set up all of my camera gear. I shot it in 4K. I had my ISO down to 100. I nailed the focus. I thought I did everything right. Shutterstock still rejected it and because it was apparently grainy and I, I disagree. But, um, but the one that was on Pond5, I was able to upload that and that was the first 4K clip that I sold. So if you think that a clip has value, you might want to put that that on Pond5 and maybe not necessarily waste or put all of your time into Shutterstock if you keep getting rejected. Because if you think that there's value in it and you think that it has a certain angle that's going to fill a certain niche, Pond5 might be right up your alley. The third thing I want to talk about is just the thumbnails that you can pick for Pond5. I think you can actually do this for Shutterstock and Adobe Stops, so it's not, a, not an exclusive thing, but it's something that I noticed that did uh, direct a bit more traffic to my page. And that was just to pick your thumbnail really carefully when you do it in your edits. I know it's just common sense, but um, it's just a good thing to know. Pick a thumbnail point in your video that's really good, that's not blurred, and check it out on your profile page or your landing spot for when other people are viewing your footage. And just make sure that that's kind of enticing or appealing as much as you can do that. I just noticed that I made a couple little tweaks and adjustments to some of the cl clips I had up there um, a little bit ago and I had thumbnails that were somewhat blurry. Didn't even notice it, but just look a little closely because it makes your look, clips look a little bit more professional if you just clean up the blur in those thumbnails and you just make sure that you kind of nail that so it's kind of enticing to prospect clients or customers. The fourth thing that's kind of nice about it is just that you can set your own prices. So I had everything set to the minimum price and then what I've basically been doing is if a clip sells, then I, I will raise the price of it because I've validated that it's sold. It's probably going to be kind of higher on the algorithm because it has sold. And so it's a good thing to maybe increase some of the minimum prices of your, um, your video clips. So it depends on how much effort you put into getting those clips and what the setup was like and what you actually want to get back for it. But you kind of get to determine that on your own. I'm still in kind of a learning phase of this and I'm dedicating, you know, a lot of time to um, to just learning stock and, and, and a few other avenues. But this is just a, a good thing to know that if you want to make your first set sale, you can set it low and then, you know, if you your sips if your clip sells a couple times, then you can just adjust the um, you can just adjust the amount of money you want to get for it. And let's say you took a lot of time to get a shot, you can actually set it at a value that's appropriate for for what you for the time and stuff that you've put into it. Or even if you have like a really expensive camera, like a red camera that you're using, you might want to just get the appropriate money back for that and not get like ten dollars or something. So how much money can you make on Pond Five? 
I'm not exactly the right person to ask for that because I actually wanted to just validate that I could make sales on there before I told everybody what I was doing on it. But I made just about $68 Canadian, so about $50 American. And this has basically been in the last um, month and a half, I suppose because I've just been focusing a bit more attention on it. And I've noticed that my page gets a lot more traction lately because I'm uploading more videos. And I think I'm gonna to continue to really focus on Pond5. They seem like a pretty awesome website to use and a good platform. So I'm gonna focus all of my video efforts on there. I'm still going to do stuff for Shutterstock because, well, they're not super popular with stock photographers right now. I have still earned the most money with them and I still wanna get money back for what I'm producing. So I will still be using them primarily for video and Adobe Stock's been awesome recently as well. So um, what I'm gonna do at the end of this video is just maybe throw a couple of the clips that I've sold and just the amounts that I've sold them for and, and on the platforms that I've sold them, just so that you can kind of maybe get some ideas. I know it's really hard sometimes with stock to just get some ideas and since everybody's quarantined right now, uh, it's a little bit trickier to kind of bend your mind around some ideas that you might want to have. So uh, I'm just gonna check them in there and hopefully they're useful to you. So thank you for watching the video and uh, we'll catch you in the next one.